Hi guys, today we're going to do our first test drive. We've done the installation, had a bit of a run through on the hose. Now we want to check it on the ramp before we head off to the lake. Want to make sure the idle control is good and stable, the gears are all working well, and the Lambda is pretty much on its aim for idle. You know, we'll kind of operate it a little bit on the, on the throttle, a little bit of forward and back, in and out of gear, so that we know when we get out there and we're maneuvering, maneuvering around uh, people and other boats that we're not going to have any issues. All right, so let's start, start her up and have a look. All right, and so on the right hand side here, we can see the Lambda and we can see our closed loop trim. It's actually sitting around 2%. All right, so after it's settled and perhaps a little bit uh, warmer than what it is, it perhaps run it for five minutes. We want to have a look at, see where that closed loop is. I mean, it's actually spot on now just by luck. So we're kind of good. So if everything's good, your uh, motor's in the water and everything's clear, we'll operate the gears. Just go through a couple of times, forward, neutral, reverse, and then we'll have a look at that. All right, and the bigger the prop, the more load on the engine and therefore the idle control has to work harder. So there's settings to do with that being in and out of gear that we're going to look at. And so if you've got a boat that's going to be doing 140, 150 miles an hour, it's going to have a big prop on it. When you drop it into gear, that's a lot of load. So we want to go through all of those settings to make sure you stay reliable while you're docking. All right, so now I can uh, just pause the data by pressing A, that stops it. And let's go have a look at our gear control. So we're going into our workspace, down to Mercury, down to Servo, and on the right hand side here, if I click over on the data and press F6, I get full screen. And here I can see my aims and my actual. So here, gear position and purple, gear position sensor, and then gear shift servo aim. So right where our cursor is now, that's an aim of 52 and we are pretty much on at 51.3, all right? And always your neutral should work. You'll always find neutral because that's kind of in between the two gears and the dogs. Sometimes we see a variation for the forward position and the reverse position. So if we're aiming for a point where it can't reach, then we should readjust that. So we put it in and out of gear a few times and if it can't reach the aim position, then we want to just update that aim position a few percent to uh, allow for that mechanical difference. All right, so we just want to do this checking. Once you've done this check for each engine, you're kind of done. It's, it's all we need to do. So if we have a look down here now, went into reverse and uh, our aim here was 14 and we got to 15.2. Back to neutral, spot on. Back to uh, forward, where our aim was 93 and our actual was 93. So certainly forward is fine, it's meeting the aim perfectly. And back to neutral, everything's okay. I might just go and check that reverse again. I press A and it starts. and we pause the data. And it's within 1%. Now to be fair, I could go and adjust this because if it, if it can only ever get to 15, then 15 is probably what we should aim for. As long as it's within one, between one and 2%, that's within the tolerance of the system and it'll stop trying to, to reach that aim as long as it's within that tolerance. So let me just press F6. And over here on the left, you'll see some parameters and it's actually under gear shift. We go to gear shift here and here is our aim points up here under position. This is the aim for reverse. So we were only reaching 15. I'd probably do this a few more times. And if it did eventually reach 15, then, uh, sorry, 14, we could leave it there. But if it's only ever gonna reach to 15, then we're gonna update that aim there uh, neutral was fine and it was reaching the forward of 93. So as long as that's all working, clicking in and out of gear, we're good on that side, um, nothing further to worry about. 
Next thing's idle. So if we go across, close our mercury tab and go up to engine tuning, down to idle, and then to airflow. And this is all about, about setting the, again, it's a feed forward thing, a little bit like boost control, which you may, may want to watch the video on boost control. We're looking for where that throttle should be when it's in neutral and where it should be when it's in forward and where it should be when it's in reverse. Uh, so we want to maintain that 600 to 620 idle aim. Uh, if we aim for a lot higher than that, if we ask the system to sort of idle at 700, 750, it's going to clunk into gear. So Mercury idle at 600 to 620, so we're, we're mimicking the same. So let's have a look. So we've got on here, here's all our parameters on the left hand side for our idle setup. Now 95% is all done. And up here, there is a, a little advanced button, a little atom, little green atom. If you click this, then you will see that the, the major amount of the items or the parameters and tables disappear. And these are the ones that we recommend you have a look to get the idle control right. So effectively, we've got really, there's only three we're looking at. Here's our idle aim main, which you're gonna, not gonna need to change unless you're going to be doing some other testing uh, but normally that's what you want to aim for 620 coming down to 600. This is our feed forward for when we're in gear we'll get to that in a minute and here's our feed forward for the different idle aims. Now we've got that pretty much sorted for the higher idle aims for when it's coming down out of idle control. Really all I'd, I'd like you to, to review is the um, how the, the system is performing at idle. Now you might say, well, why do we need to do that? But there's a lot of different options out there already for Mercury's uh, different size throttle bodies. There's Kong kits, there's all sorts of things that have larger throttle bodies. There's variations across engines. If you want to get this thing really nice and that, that idle really reliable, then we want to go through this process. All right, and so sometimes, who knows, someone's going to put a 500 throttle body on a 450 and mix them up. So this is where we come to just get that part right so we just don't have any problems with docking. Right, so we're in our idle uh, feed forward main table. So these numbers here are a percentage of a maximum throttle. So our maximum throttle for these engines is normally about seven. So that means if I put a number of 100 in here, we would get 7% actual throttle. The reality is uh, on the vertical axis here, depending on which software you've got, it's either coolant temp or oil temp. Um, as the temperature goes up, of course the engine is, it's easier for it to idle, so you don't need as much throttle butterfly. All right, so we wanna have it so that it's idling perfectly uh, with these numbers at the correct location. All right, so we're going to have a look over here at what's happening live. And so we can see we're right on our aim idle uh, down across here. The aim idle is 611 at the moment, and the engine speed's pretty much hovering around there. The next two channels down is our the amount of correction. So this is the amount that the feed forward table is wrong. All right, so the feed forward table number is 56. And at the moment, the closed loop integral is pulling out 10%. So that means if the closed loop wasn't doing a quick job or you just arrived into idle, it would be idling too high. So for this location here, I would just click these two numbers here. We're nearly at 50 degrees oil temperature now. And you can page, uh, page this down like this using the page down key. And then you'll see the closed loop basically back away. All right, so I usually like two or three percent um, negative, if you like, uh, correction on the negative side so that if, it, if it's going to come into idle, if it's going to do anything, it might add a it might idle a fraction high. So having it just pull a little bit of negative out to me is um, that's the right way to set it up. But so we've got that tidied up. You can work through it as I was saying to get the different, each time you kind of, I say, get the different uh, temperature ranges with it sitting nicely at that negative three integral. Uh, it's just something you chip away at um, and 
get as good as you can over time. Next thing for us to check is the gear idle mass flow feed forward. So this is how much more uh, as a percentage we give the throttle when it goes in and out of gear or into gear in this case. All right, so motor's in and props on. We drop it into gear. Now we're looking at the integral there and it actually crept back up to minus one, which is fine. And you can see here, I've got 10% extra for when it's in forward on this table. All right, it's actually pretty good straight away. Um, if anything, it's actually nice to have a little bit of positive integral on there. And then what happens when you come back out of gear, it just gives a nice little, just the, the tiny little kick when you go back into neutral. I'll show you what I mean there. So if we go across here, and maybe I'll make, I'll, I'll make this zero, okay? Right, you hear the idle dip, but now you'll see the closed loop bring it up. All right, so it's bringing, it's, it's fixing the idle by opening the throttle, and our closed loop uh, integral is pu pulled all the way up to an extra 10%. All right, now if you listen when I drop out of gear, you'll hear it, because it's got a more throttle than normal open, got 10% correction it's not going to need that when it goes into neutral it'll give a little rev so let's just try that to hear that all right so it gives you that and now the integrals winding back down again okay so that's an exaggerated effect of what we want but it's kind of the opposite of what you want to do in neutral so with forward uh, I sort of tend to aim for two or three percent integral positive and again you've got oil temp or coolant temp on that axis that you can go and tune those individually. All right, so it's pushing integral in because we undershot it, you know, that number there should probably be 10 and uh, we've got six and so it's got four or five percent correction. We come back out and you get that nice little, um, you know, you never want it to be stalling when it's going in or out of gear. So just as I say, um, I'm gonna make it eight and probably leave it at that for now. Just a little bit of positive there. All right, and then back we go to the reverse. So I'm just highlighting the numbers ready, click back. Now we're getting fussy here. I mean, I just don't, it's not good to have it minus 10, minus 15 integral. If you get the throttle body on there, that's different. Um, then you're going to see some big corrections. We don't want those big corrections to be there. We want the, and whenever it goes into either neutral or forward or reverse, we want the throttle to snap to the correct position and let the closed loop fix up any little errors from there. All right, so that number's pretty good. And you can see it's, uh, we've got a little bit of negative coming out to fix it. So we can go across and do this kind of that same same thing. Normally reverse numbers a little bit less because the prop's not uh, under as much load. All right. It's probably going to prove me to be a liar, but that's life. Control S to save where we're at so far. All right, and then I can just, just pop it back into neutral. So you can hear, if we're going in, in and out of all of these gears, we really don't want to hear that nice little kick on the revs as you come back out. All right, but we want the revs to be low when we go in so we don't get the too much of a clunk. That's pretty good. All right, so that's the gears done, uh, idle control done, and probably the only other thing I would do before you move off the trailer is just make sure that the fueling around the area where we're going to take off um, are the, in the efficiency map there, make sure that's right. So let's click across there and have a look. So we're on our target. We've got a little bit of closed loop coming out, 6%. I tend to correct idle stuff after you've given it a decent run. Um, and in, in general, sort of look at it when it first starts and runs versus when you come back from a run, and kind of split the difference. It's really difficult to get it exactly right everywhere. And so you'll always find there's some either bit of positive or negative uh, trim happening at idle. Um, so something you can work on, I'd come back to that. 
So I'd just put it into gear and then just as if we were going to take it off the trailer, but we're not, I'll just put this onto foot throttle, which I've got to put it in neutral for. Okay. All right, so, so just the slightest amount of throttle and let's have a look, make sure there's no big flat spots in there. We can do, you know, we can tune up to sort of 1200, 1300 here if we like. All right, so we've got a little bit of negative. Obviously, got to be careful. We're not dragging too much stuff off, off the ground. And then, you know, we just check it's, it's stable and it's good. All right. So it means we can get off the trailer. There's going to be no stalling. Often, you know, there's boats around. It's, it's tight where the ramp is. So we just want to make sure everything is good before we move off and go to that next stage.